Good morning, Facebook land and Park Place Church. It's good to see you this morning. I uh, hope I got a good connection today. Um, I'm working from home today. I'm going to try to take some time off, so uh, hopefully uh, I'm coming across clear. Uh, there's Amanda. Thank you for joining me. <clears throat> uh, Sheila, I see you're watching. Uh, so much going on. It seems like... Uh, the stimulus package is getting approved, hopefully, by the House today, which will allow uh, more money to flow into our economy. I'm going to ask you guys this. Can you hear me okay? <clears throat> My tripod, tripod broke, and, uh, so it's a little bit uh, more difficult. Um, I've just kind of got my phone propped up, but can you hear me okay? Can you just respond by saying we can hear you or something like that? Good to see Becky and Georgette. Sounds good and clear. Thank you, Sheila. Well, listen, I'm going to be back on tonight, uh, 6 p.m., and uh, Pastor Bobby had an idea. He's uh, he's with Park Place Church as well, and uh, good morning, Jenny. Um, he had an idea that we should probably do a prayer service, and I think we should. And so I'm coming back on tonight at 6 p.m., uh, and I hope that you can join me uh, during that time. I notice a lot of the times when um, when I'm on Facebook Live with you in the mornings for our devotions that there's conversation between you guys, which I think is absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> you know, because it's a it's a forum. It essentially is. It becomes a forum, even though I'm sharing a devotion. You guys are saying hi to each other, and and you know, um, I like that. So I thought. And Bobby thought, well, let's just try to like incorporate some sort of a community forum in which we just really just take time and pray. Thank you, Nan and, and Linda, uh, for joining us. So tonight at 6 p.m., uh, come ready to share your prayer requests, and I will be praying over all the prayer requests. But here's the thing. I won't be the only one praying. We're all going to be praying. Uh, I'll be praying on Facebook Live so I can see what you're asking um, for us to pray about. Everyone can see what you're asking for us to pray about. Good to see you, Linda, Charlie, Esther. Uh, so while I'm doing that, we're all praying for each other at the same time. Hi, Regina. Uh, good to see you, Aunt Jan, watching again. So 6 p.m. is our prayer hour. 6 p.m., don't know if it'll last an hour. Let's just wait and see. Uh, but if if you'll be sharing your prayer concerns or your prayer ideas or things you want uh, personal things to be praying for. Uh, we're all going to be praying for you. I'll be praying out loud on Facebook Live. And again, um, if you want to keep confidence and, and not share details, that's probably best. Uh, for instance, um, if you've got a loved one that you're praying for and you want to give us initials, uh, God knows and we don't need to know. Uh, there's some things that are more personal or more private and you want to keep that to yourself. But uh, tonight, 6 p.m., I may be doing this um, three or four nights a week, and I may be doing it every night. Let's just see how it goes tonight. I get nervous before I come on Facebook Live. I'm sure you don't. You just listen to me, but um, I get very nervous about this. I'm not really good speaking um, kind of in this kind of form, but um, I feel kind of on the spot, but I do enjoy it. Once I get into the Word of God, I get more comfortable. Thank you, Joy, Bernadette, and Kaylee for watching, uh, listening in. Um, so let's get right to our passage. I just want to encourage you. Uh, we're looking at Philippians today for our morning devotion. And uh, yeah, I'm looking good. I'm casual, Charlie. Thank you for saying that. I'm very casual today. I hope to be on my boat for two hours. Good morning, Rick. Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to give you a chance to get there. And uh, good to see you, Mo. And uh, um, this is the way I am at home. I'm casual. T-shirt, baseball hat. Uh, it's all good. I love I love being home with my family. Um, high tide today is from one to three. I can only take my boat out on high tide because I live on a canal. Low tide means you're not going anywhere, and I got a boat lift, and I can put my boat down when it's high tide. And uh, uh, from one to three or one to four, uh, I can go out for a little bit today. But I have a three thirty appointment here at the house. Someone's coming over uh, to talk to me about something personal going on in their life. So even though it's my day off, um, I love what I do, just like you love what you do. And, uh, you know, when you're serving the Lord, uh, you're always working. It doesn't matter if you're getting paid uh, like me. Uh, well, I used to get paid. 
uh, I might still get paid. Uh, or if you're working a corporate job like you or, or some sort of business like you're doing, um, we love what we do for the Lord, and uh, that's awesome. So Philippians chapter 3, we're starting with verse 7. Uh, now Philippians is one of my favorite books. There is so much wisdom in Philippians, so please take some time maybe throughout the day today or tomorrow, uh, read Philippians again. There is so much wisdom. I mean, there are just nuggets of gold in Philippians. And so this is just one of the many little nuggets here. And uh, Fred, thank you for joining me, Fred. Fred picked up my Harley the other day and took it to the shop, and it's back, and it's, uh, it's running great. I was on it two days ago. Thank you, Fred, for your help. <clears throat> But we're looking at Philippians 3, verse 7. If you have your Bible open, that's great. If you don't, don't worry. I'll read it for you. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. And in verse 10, uh, the Apostle Paul goes on and says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, because like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. That's powerful, my friends. Basically, let's just stop for a moment and, and kind of recap what we're, what we're learning in those first few verses. Basically, verses 7 through 11 is telling us that here is this, this, this super apostle, this mighty apostle. His name is Paul, uh, used to be Saul. Remember, he had this Damascus Road experience in which Jesus appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Uh, knocked him off his, his uh, I don't know, whatever he was riding uh, at the time, <clears throat> knocked him to the ground. He saw a heavenly light coming uh, from heaven and a voice uh, through the light, it looked like, uh, and, the, and, the, and it was very clear, why are you persecuting me, Saul? And he said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. Good to see you, Lynn, Diana, and thank you for watching. But listen, my friends, here's what's great about this. He had scales on his eyes and he couldn't see. And this is a man who was a Pharisee of Pharisees. This is a man who had everything. He probably was wealthy to some degree in worldly standards back then. His name was Saul. It was changed to Paul. He regained his sight and he's reading. He's writing to the church in Philippi and he's saying these things. He says that they were all gains. I was... I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I, I had it all, but he said, I consider it loss for the sake of Christ in verse 7. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. Thank you, Frank and Teresa and Pam and Howard for watching. He says, I consider it not only a loss, everything that I used to have, but I consider it garbage, my friends garbage. He says, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him. My friends, my question for you this morning is, are you holding on to those things of your past? Are you still hanging on to that garbage that Paul is speaking about? I don't know. Maybe he's talking about his reputation. It was garbage. Maybe he's talking about his worldly possessions. He's calling it garbage. He's calling his, his, his old relationships garbage. Because compared to the new life that he has in Christ, it is garbage, my friends, that I may gain Christ. It is like garbage. And in verse 9, that I may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. We know there is no righteousness really that comes from the law, but comes from grace. The law was there to show us what sin is, but Jesus gave us grace. So we are not under the law, my friends. We are under grace. And said that we are now under a new covenant. For the old covenant uh, didn't do what it was supposed to do. I mean, it did what it needed to do for a time. But in the fullness of time, Christ came. And he was an extension of the old covenant. He fulfilled the law. 
He was uh, an extension of the law and gave us something better, which is grace. And he says yes to know the power of whose resurrection? His own? No. He's not talking, Paul isn't talking about his resurrection. Uh, he's talking about the resurrection in Christ through faith. And I like that. So if I exercise my faith in Christ, I can learn the power of a resurrection. Not my resurrection, but his resurrection. That means what Christ did, his atonement on the cross and the resurrection from the dead, from the grave. Yes, that resurrection and that power can actually rest on me. He says, I want to know Christ in verse 10. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. And not only that, participation in suffering. Who's suffering? Paul's suffering? No. Look at verse 10. He said to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering. So that Paul is saying that we can also suffer the way Christ suffered. There is a participation, my friends, that we have in his suffering. I'm not saying that we suffer like Christ suffered. Obviously, uh, we aren't probably going to go to the cross and be crucified like Christ, but that we can participate in his suffering. That means that we are suffering in some ways, similarly to the way Christ suffered. Not necessarily the, the same type of crucifixion, but we are suffering because all things that were are gained to us, all the things that we, 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 we thought were important to us, we now put behind us so that we may gain the power of the resurrection, that we may participate in his sufferings, becoming like him, in verse 10, even until his death. So because of Christ's suffering and resurrection, that we can participate in his suffering and in his resurrection. And so somehow through our sacrifice, though it's not like his, but it's still a sacrifice, Paul says, somehow we can attain to the resurrection from the dead. Listen, my friends, this is the good news in verses 7 through 11. Now, we kind of change gears a little bit in verse 12. So if you still have your Bible open, listen to verse 12. He says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. He said, I haven't already obtained all these things that I'm talking about. I haven't suffered to the point of which Christ has suffered. And I don't know all things the way Christ knows all things. But nevertheless, I press on to the goal. What is the goal? The goal ultimately is that we are going to live our life in such sacrifice that we participate in his suffering. And then ultimately, we are resurrected in his resurrection. Because he was resurrected, we will be resurrected, we will be changed and made new. Hallelujah. And that's the good news. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. In verse 13, he said, I'm still learning. This is a, 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 a little piece of scripture in which Paul is very humble. He says, I, you know, I, I may be a super apostle. I may have, have raised someone from the dead who was listening to a sermon of mine uh, years ago, uh, maybe uh, more recently. I don't know. But, but he says, I have done these wonderful things. I'm a super apostle. I have started all of these bands of churches and, and I write to them and I encourage them and I've done great things for the Lord. I get together with the other super apostles like uh, Peter and John. Wonderful. But brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, I forget that which is behind. I let go of that which is behind and I am straining forward to what is ahead in verse 13. That goes back to what we were talking about in verse 7, in which he says, all these things are rubbish. All these things are garbage. He says, one thing I do know is that I forget all of that which is behind me. My friends, what is behind you this morning? There's a lot of stuff behind you. There's a, a lot of water under the bridge. There's a lot of sin. There's a lot of nonsense. There's a lot of mistakes. And there's a lot of things that you wish you hadn't done, hadn't have said. Even this morning, I, I, just, I, I just know in my heart that I need to get right with God. And I need to ask my wonderful wife to forgive me for saying something I shouldn't have said. And, and acting out in a way that I shouldn't have acted out. But I do know that that was earlier and that now is a new moment for me to say 
Dina, would you forgive me? Would you, would you forgive me for, <clears throat> for saying something I, I, I wish I hadn't said in an argument? But nevertheless, I know she's watching. Pastor Rick and Dan's watching and, and Mo, thank you for watching. My friends, we are living in the new covenant. And Paul is saying that which is behind me is garbage and rubbish. And, and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't stop me from doing what God has called me to do. For God has called us heavenward or heaven bound. He said all of that is garbage. So my friends, listen to verse 14. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And I like that. That is powerful, my friends. You see, we are not bound to those sins. We are not bound to what we said we wish we hadn't said or, or, or the sins of our past. We aren't held hostage by those things. I was talking to a friend of mine a while ago about <clears throat> We sometimes have difficulty forgiving ourselves of things that have happened in our past. But, you know, quite honestly, God has already forgiven us. And if God has forgiven us, then why haven't we let go of those sins that hold us back? That is not of God. That is of Satan. Satan wants to uh, steal, kill, and destroy. I think we talked about that yesterday. Or maybe I talked about it in my sermon. But nevertheless, my friends, let go of that which has bound you. Consider it rubbish. Even the things that you used to hold on to. Maybe it's pride. Maybe it's the fact that you made a lot of money. Or maybe it's the fact that you have had... Um, um, some 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 success in corporations or in business or or maybe it's just whatever but be like Paul and consider all of that garbage for the sake of Christ and if you would just scoot on over to Philippians chapter 4 we're going to close with this he says therefore my brothers and sisters you whom I love I long for my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way my dear friends I love that Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I have loved and longed for, my joy and my crown. He says, you are my crown now. You know, I used to hold on to these things. For me, it was money. And for a while, I would open up these businesses and some of them became successful. But I made a lot of mistakes too. And, and, and I wanted to build up a savings account. And for my boys, I wanted to leave them some sort of an inheritance or something. And, and I really kind of really puffed myself up in some ways. And, you know, but none of that really matters now because my joy and my crown is is my ministry. My joy is is the people that I get to pour myself into and the people that I get to speak to and pray, uh, pray through and and pray with and pray over. And some people I get to lead to Christ and some people I just get to pray and see miracles happen in their life, my friends. And then if you look at verse 4 of chapter 4 of Philippians, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. He says, The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends or surpasses all understanding, It'll guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Doesn't get any better than that. Thank you, Andre, Nancy, and Jack for watching. And then in verse 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, I want you to think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me and, 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 and you've seen in me, he says, Paul says uh, in verse 9, put it into practice. All these wonderful things, put them into practice and the God of peace will be with you. My friend, stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. Listen, everything behind you is garbage. Everything that happened this morning is now behind you. Everything that happened yesterday is behind you. All the mistakes and sins and all of the things that you used to hold on to, you don't hold on to those things anymore. You see, all that matters is today. All that matters is God's word. And it is alive and well and it is working in your life. This word is alive, sharper than any double-edged sword, the Bible says. And I believe it is the inerrant word of God and it speaks life into us. It is speaking to us today. It is telling us that today is a new day. Don't hold on to the former things. Rejoice in the Lord always. Can you rejoice under quarantine? 
Can you rejoice in your two-bedroom apartment? Can you rejoice in your single-wide mobile home? Can you rejoice in, in your situation even though you look at the savings account and you see it dwindling down? Can you rejoice in the fact that you've lost your job or you've been laid off? Can you rejoice in the fact that, you know, worldly speaking, you don't have much? You don't have a lot? Paul says, I rejoice because my crown and joy is in my ministry. My friends, is your joy and your crown in your ministry? What crown is he, is he talking about? He's talking about the crown of righteousness that God will give you on that day if you do not give up. You see, I don't know. I, I kind of like where I'm at now. None of this stuff is really that important. 